Hey everyone, back again with you. Wanted to do a quick video on this, not sure if maybe it'll help some of you out. Uh, but I wanted to do a video on how to properly store ammo, or at least what I consider properly storing ammo. I'm sure there's some varying opinions out there, and maybe there's better ways to do it, who knows. But uh, this is the way that I, I generally tend to do it, and I feel safe with long-term storage doing it this way. So, uh, first thing, you know, if you're using a uh, steel can is great. Using a plastic can, that's great. really just depends on what you prefer. Uh, I have a separate video out there as far as a comparison between the steel and, and plastic ammo cans, so feel free to check that out if you're trying to decide which one might be best for you. <clears throat> but uh, first thing that I would recommend doing is always labeling um, the front of your, your ammo can as to what's going to be inside of it, especially if you're going to have um, uh, you know a bunch of ammo cans. And I got about six or seven that are full. This one's uh, what I use just for kind of miscellaneous mix ammo. I don't have the plastic one uh, labeled mainly because I'm just using that as a temporary solution until I get another ammo can because I need another one. Uh, this one, though, I, I, I tend not to use the plastic ones for ammunition, uh, mainly because it's just not as heavy duty as I, as I like it to be. So, uh, But again, you can use it. It's not a big deal. It does work. Uh, so again, labeling it is a great idea. You're able to quickly identify without having to open the ammo can constantly and expose your ammunition to uh, the oxygen and the moisture in the air uh, if you just have it labeled on the front. Going into it a little bit further, one thing that you always kind of want to watch for when you're purchasing ammo cans, especially in the steel ones, is that uh, you're, you're looking at the, the ammo can itself and making sure that the, the edges are, is a nice square shape. It's not banged up a lot because if it is banged up or it's got dents here, it won't make a solid steel with the O-ring that you'll find uh, in, these, in these lids. And that's really important, uh, making sure that the O-ring uh, is, is making contact with the top of this ledge here. Uh, so making sure that you got a nice square one is definitely key for uh, making a nice seal on it. Uh, the second thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your O-ring is in good shape. That O-ring is very important. If it's cracked or it's worn, uh, it's really not going to do the job that it's required to do. And I'll try to get a zoom in here so you can see that this one's in pretty decent shape. When you buy these, just open them up, look them over real good, make sure they're good, in good shape, make sure there's no rust on these ammo, on these ammo cans. Uh, if it's already starting to rust, it's going to be on an ammo can that you're not going to want to deal with. So, um, if you got both those things, the ammo can looks like it's in decent shape, go ahead and purchase it. You know, it shouldn't be much more than $15 to $20 absolute most. Uh, when you get it home, what you're going to want to do is clean it up, wipe off all the dirt of it uh, on the, off the outside, the inside, make sure it's nice and clean. A lot of that debris and following, you know, just as it with guns can, can uh, you know, create rust and pitting and stuff on these and undo necessary wear on them. So just clean them up real nice. It, it's definitely good practice just to have good, uh, good standing with your, your equipment. Uh, the next thing I always do is I oil the inside of the O-ring, and I periodically do this. This one's a little bit dry, but you can see that there's still some residue left there on the on the ammo can top itself. But I actually use gun oil, and I'll go with a uh, just a cloth and wipe along the entire O-ring and and get it a nice um, nice. Uh, covering of oil on it and that will assist in the sealing of the o-ring as well as uh, preventative maintenance making sure that it's not going to dry up and crumble on you. Uh, one thing that I also do is I if I can try to grab some big Ziploc bags and put all my ammo into the Ziploc bags. Uh, kind of group them together with like-sided ammunition and uh, the reason for that is because if you do have such as this a can where it's going to be uh, you know just kind of a mix of ammunition that you have left over maybe miscellaneous stuff and you know you're going to be opening it uh, opening it and closing it a lot uh, just having the groups of ammunition not being exposed to the oxygen every time you open it is, is uh, you know good good practice as well uh, so as you can see I got them boxed out individually into different bags. Uh, they're sealed up so the oxygen isn't getting there even with this this can open. Uh, then I also use these uh, Sentry Safe Sure Dry um, Desicare Incorporated I guess is where it's from. Um, safe Dries essentially is what they are and it sucks the moisture out of the area it's in and uh, keeps everything nice and dry inside these boxes. These are generally used for safes but uh, you can definitely use them in this in this situation as well. So. Uh, with all those things combined, your ammo should last a very long time. You should not have any issues with humidity or um, decaying of your, your ammo. Um, again, if you follow all these steps, you should it should last a long time. So, hope this helps, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate watching. Thanks.